a lead is only as good as how a lead is nurtured, as in how a lead is reached out to, how relationships build, and the sales process in terms of how you engage with that person, how you enroll them into whatever relationship that you want them to be a part of. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Welcome to the My Future Business Show. My name's Rick Nusky. I hope you're doing really well and thank you so very much for joining us today. Now, if this is your first time, thanks for joining us. I know that you're in for a treat, especially because I'm on the line with the president and CEO of the highly successful fitness-based agency called Gym Pillars. And on this call, we're going to be talking about how Gym Pillars helps gym owners achieve their personal and professional goals. And with all that being said, welcome to the show, George Liu. Thanks for having me, my man. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Absolutely. A pleasure to have you here. Now, I've uh, spoken with you just prior to the call, and we've talked a lot about, uh, you know, what we're going to cover on today's call, and it's very, very exciting, but it's customary for us to spend time, and I think in the context of today's call, it's very important to share a little bit about your backstory. So tell us where you're calling in from today. Yeah, so I'm currently based in LA. It's um... Um, I grew up East Coast in the U.S. and uh, currently spend a lot of time in L.A. My girlfriend's based out here. So, um, yeah, I, I usually travel a lot, but here for now. <laughs> here for now. Fantastic. Now, there's lots of videos that I've watched of uh, your work with Jim Pillars, and I'm very, very excited to be covering off on those in a moment. But uh, what do you love about where you're located? Um, well, I think the the weather, right? It's like oh, that's one of the things that, that I really can't it's really hard to beat right it's like when it comes to la i think um as you're walking around it's, it's um whether it's summer or not it's, yeah. it's pretty much always sunny right it's like, yeah so, uh, that's gonna be the number one thing so yeah, yeah. no complaints here absolutely I'm, i remember going to venice beach as we were traveling through to go to san francisco we were driving around mm -hmm. the states and i can remember you know the muscle beach and just how how much a lot of people do look after themselves is that a, a very much a cultural thing in those sorts of locations do you think it, it seems like that, yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, the gym, the fitness industry, a, a big chunk of it originated from California. And um, yeah, no, I, I'm with you 100% as well. I remember the first time I actually ever visited LA it was uh, just walking down Venice Beach, and I was like, wow, wow. I'm gonna move here. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm definitely gonna move here. So, yeah, so, yeah here I am. Now, tell us a little bit. I know you've got a backstory leading up to this, but let's wind back the, the clock a little bit because I'd love to talk about, I guess, where your entrepreneurial streak came from, if we could, George. Now, when you were mm -hmm. growing up, who or who around you would have given you that inspiration? Did you, or were you just naturally inclined to become a business owner, do you think? Hmm. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I don't think it was ever natural uh for me i mean like for, for me my background um I, I mean actually i was born in japan i was raised in china right so mm -hmm. um I, I didn't move to the u.s until i was about 10 years old so mm -hmm. when, when i came here it was um at that point i was already used to a lot of changes in my life right so so um i think my upbringing was anything but traditional right so um when it came to that aspect of uh of change or seeking new changes uh that was something i was always very open to but um, growing up, my brother actually had a really big, uh, big, very big influence in terms of my development, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how I thought about things. So he's he's four years older, um, and out of our entire family, he was always the the, the oldest child, right? So um, it's very it's it's traditional a part of uh i guess um eastern culture where mm. the the eldest of the family tends to carry a lot of uh the sense of responsibility on the shoulders right yep yep so so my brother was the same thing and especially uh with my parents having divorced at an early age so um he actually guided me oftentimes uh when i was growing up and um i think when it comes to the entrepreneurial interest if you will mm -hmm. Uh, he was the one to actually pave the way. So I actually saw him just uh, just do random things, right? It's like starting up a like, t-shirt brand. And, yeah, then, yeah. Um, and then after, <laughs> after um, we actually went to the same college as well. Um, after he had graduated, he actually, he was working on Facebook at the time. He even jumped from, away from Facebook to start his own uh, e-commerce brand at the time. Um, so so those those nuggets growing up, having him to, as someone to model after was a, uh, really helpful for me. Um, and it wasn't until after I got to college 
uh, he he made aware of the fact that uh, our school, UMass Amherst, which is a public school in the East Coast, mm -hmm. um, allowed for a program for you to actually create your own uh, or create your own uh, major, if you will. Right? Yep. It's like you get to piece it all together. So yep. uh, that's actually when, when I had first had my interest like really peaked, um, yep. especially when it comes to my the, the professional side of things. Um, so that's essentially where I got the where I got the start, I guess, if you will. Yeah, that's amazing. Now I know that uh, you're looking fit. You're looking amazing. I know that this is a foundational piece of your life. Uh, I'd love to talk about your um, day to days because this is what's fundamentally different about this particular business building podcast because mm -hmm. we go behind the scenes a little bit. We talk about your day to day. Would you mind sharing what your daily routine looks like? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I, I actually really like that. Um, I think as far as my day, daily routine nowadays, <clears throat> I, I like to wake up. I used to be very strict and very rigid, <laughs> regimented. Right? So it's, yeah. yeah, very, very regimented. It's, uh, it's not that I don't anymore, but I think somewhere along the lines, um, I, I found that the, the rigidity actually hurt me more than helps. Um, but nowadays, like in terms of my daily routine, I, I wake up anywhere between five, uh, on, on days I go to the gym, I wake up at like 5.20, 5.30 a.m. Um, so this is um, typically Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I, I just started going to CrossFit uh, a few months ago. Yep. Uh, up until then, I was working on my own, usually in the mornings. So, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I would wake up around 5.20, hit a 6 a.m. class, uh, finish up by 7, 7 a.m. Um, and then usually get home by like 7.30 a.m. Uh, sometimes I would take a, take a walk. Other times mm -hmm. I would meditate for 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> Before jumping in the shower, um, I'm in calls for bulk of the time nowadays. Yep. Uh, just, just because at this point I have a, I have a full team. We're a team of 13, so uh, a lot of team meetings, a, a mm -hmm. lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings, um, a lot of projects, uh, coupled with uh, different things that um, I do just in terms of like deep work uh, or small tasks uh, that I do to, to move the business forward. Um, Very that's busy. usually what it looks like. Yeah, it's, it's usually what it looks like. Uh, I'm a little bit weird in my ways. I, I eat one <laughs> meal a day. Um, so so I, um, I I started intermittent fasting about uh, two-ish years ago and mm -hmm. it had stuck. And I, I found myself just kept, kept pushing the, the window of eating later and later into the day. Um, so now I eat one meal a day. Yeah, usually wow. Usually around this time. So. Yeah, I, I, I always think about, you've got the name Jim Pillars and it's really fantastic because it's also, to me, I think about pillars of life. We talk about, yes. you know, sleep, lifestyle, nutrition, spiritual, physical. And what about the other aspects of your life? I'd love to talk about your mental strength. Do you ever have those days where you go, you know what, I just want to pull the covers over my head and go back to sleep. And if you do, what do you do in those days? How do you get move past them? Oh, that's such a good question. <clears throat> I think um, I... Those days don't come often to me, but that's uh, good. <laughs> I'll be very, yeah, which is a really good thing, which I'm very grateful for. Um, but I'll, I'll be vulnerable. So with everything that has been happening the past two months, we've actually hit a really big wall. Right? It's like for our business, we have been growing very fast. So it's just been progress uh, mm -hmm. month over month, right? Yep. And then uh, up until about two months ago, we, we really hit a wall. It's um, and in the name, the it's, it's part of the game, right? It's like of entrepreneurship, in which yeah. I, when the pressure starts to build, right? It's like, so I think within the past probably I would say month and a half or so, I have had more of those days than I have ever had, <laughs> ever had. Right? Um, early early in the morning when you when the alarm um, goes off, off yeah. you, you still feel tired in your body, right? Just maybe from the day before, or maybe from all the stress. Um, like I have a tendency to to actually oftentimes like just think. Um, think about work uh, right before I go to bed. Trying so to go to sleep. Actually, yeah, so, so oftentimes I dream about it, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, which at, at certain times is helpful, right? As in, like, you can let your subconscious just start working Healthy on Healthy stress, yep. ideas. yeah. But then other times it can be overwhelming and daunting, right? It's like, um, I think for me, it's, there's, it sounds simple, but it's all for uh, easier said than done. But um, just one foot in front of the other. I just wake up and do the first thing, right? It's like if you just if you're able to pull yourself out, do it. Just start brushing your teeth, yeah. right? So starting with that, right? Just become more intentional with your day. Um, for me, I almost almost always start off my day with, with meditation, and then um, once you pull yourself out, you start the first activity, then you jump to the second activity. Um, then it's just going at it step by step, right? Yeah. Like the, yep. the, the quote the quote goes, um, "What's the best way to eat an elephant? Uh, one bite at a time." 
you know, I love the fact that you humanize the experience for Jim uh, Pillars. Now, I've seen a lot of your calls. You're very human, very down to earth. And I think that's what makes you stand out. Now, I'm, I, I'd love to talk about, if we can, inherent with um, being an entrepreneur and starting up a business venture, whatever it is, there's that mm -hmm. element of retained risk. How do you manage risk? I, I guess there's good risk and there's bad risks. And does it, uh, you know, does it play on your mind? Um, you know, if I do this, I might get this outcome. How do you manage your risk? Mm, that's a good question, man. It's, um, I, I mean, when it comes to the topic of risk, I think it's, um, this is something I always keep in mind, right? It's like, um, if you don't start, you never know, do you? If you don't start, you never know. Yeah, that's that's one thing. And and I, I think there's a quote. Uh, it was actually Jeff Bezos shared this on his uh, his interview, which I, I deeply resonated with. Um, for him, one of the things he said was uh, at certain at that point in his life, when it comes to jumping into something um, or not, or staying in in the known in the comfort zone, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things he he wanted to make sure of is he wanted to uh, he wanted to not live his life with regret. Yeah. Right. And I think that's something, especially for, for people that are aspiring to become entrepreneurs or are entrepreneurs when they first start off, it's, uh, it's just that intention of living life meaningfully, intentionally, uh, without any regret. Right. And, and then he dives into it, sharing that, uh, regret oftentimes, uh, when you examine it at the end of your life, it doesn't come from acts of commission as in the things that you did. It's like, yep. oh man, I'm so bummed that I went to that thing or I'm so bummed that I asked that girl out or whatever it may be. It comes from acts of omission. Right? As a man, like, well, I didn't do that. If I did, what would have ha what would have happened, right? Yeah. Um, and then when we usually take a step back when it comes to the context of jumping into like an entrepreneurial venture, if you will, or a new idea or something that's the unknown, oftentimes what holds us back is just this fear of uncertainty, right? It's like this fear of unknown that we don't know what we're gonna get ourselves into. And usually, from with that. with that, with that fear, there's um, it's almost like a veil in which you can't see through, right? So, so you. You're, you're terrified of it because you mm. don't know what's on the other side, but it, 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 it magnifies the sense of risk that you have in your head because of fear, right? So yes. um, when you take a step back, like if you're able to just see it for what it is, is that there's, I mean, no matter how old you are, uh, when it comes to something that you truly want to do, right? It's, again, there's a difference. There's uh, on one hand, I think there's a, um, th there's a difference between it's like, Oh yeah, that's, that's cool. I'll check it out, right? It's like mm -hmm. something like a hobby versus another thing. It's like, man, this is pulling me. Yeah. Right? It's like this this calls out to my heart. I need right? to do this, this. is drawing me. Right. I need to do that. Right. And then with the latter, it's like no matter how big the risks are, there really are no risks. Because if you don't follow that path, you don't know what it's gonna lead to. Yeah, if it doesn't right? if, if what, it, what do they say? If it doesn't kill you, it only makes you stronger. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you just walk down that path and just learn, right? So. I'm, I'm absolutely loving this call, George, because you know, you're revealing yeah. some things about yourself that I think really give body to your business. And I'd love to talk about leadership and your role as a leader in your organization. You mentioned earlier that you've got people that you're working alongside and trying to, mm -hmm. you know, meet the mission of Jim Pillars, which we're going to go into in the core of the call in the moment. Tell us mm -hmm. your leadership style. What, what's your, I guess, your one thing that you do really well, do you think? prioritizing people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think they care about people above all else <clears throat> i think um when i first set out to, to build this company it's um uh, there's there's i mean this is my first ever venture right <clears throat> yep yep um when i first started to um begin to build this uh for me i was i'm, I'm an optimist at heart however there's uh there's still that little voice in the back of my head i was just like <laughs> oh you got it too like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, it's like, hey, is this going to work? Is this going to work? But even then, from that place, I was, uh, I remember, uh, I want to be very intentional in terms of how I was building this business. And for me, I wanted to build a business that, that was people over profit kind of business, right? For me, um, I was privileged enough to, to be in a full-time job at a very big company. I was working at LinkedIn. So all my basic needs were covered. I was getting paid very well. The, the benefits were all there. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think to this, uh, this research study that, that shows that's, um, um, when it comes to happiness, right, a person's happiness, it's like it's once you reach that threshold, like let's say, I think it's like 50K or 70K uh, yearly income, um, any increase in such, it, it doesn't contribute towards your happiness. <clears throat> and I've, I've actually experienced that firsthand. By the time that I had left, I was miserable because I wasn't able to pour my heart into something that I, I deeply cared about, which is Jim Pillage at the time. 
Um, so by the time I started building gym pillars, one of the things that I was very intentional about was just like, well, I, I know I'm not money motivated. What I care about is like the, the people as well as the impact that this can have on people that, that I care about. Right? It's like, um, and I just care about people very deeply. Right. So I think, um, whenever I'm communicating with my team, like they, they know always where the intention is coming from and, and that I'm, I'm always there for them. I'm always in their corner. Right. I think, um, it's yeah, obvious. It's a, it is yeah. obvious. Again, just by watching your videos, is you know, if they say a picture tells a thousand words, a video tells a million, doesn't it? And you know, just the way that you communicate on a ground level, human to human, you know, I'm not the business and you're my client. It's more, hey, look, there's a real relationship here. Tell us a little bit about how important relationships are to you, and do they last a long time in gym pillars? Yeah, yeah, no, critical. It's, um, well, I guess I. Really how important relationships are to me. I mean, relationships are everything. Right? Mm. It's like at the end of the day, I think um, we're put on this planet um, to build relationships. Yep. I, I, th I truly think that's uh, that's what moves humanity forward, right? As, as that's, that's who we are as a species, we're social beings. Yep. Um, in terms of how long relationship lasts uh, in the context of uh, clients or... No, as, or... Uh, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm more focused on really the client base here because at the end of the day, that's we obviously know that there's internal customers and then there's the client's uh, side of things. But from a client mm -hmm. perspective, you know, because I would think given the type of business that you are running, that there'd be that ongoing relationship to the point where they're like thanking you on these videos. It really caught yes. my attention. Yeah, yeah, no, I, which I appreciate that, man. It's, um, I think when it comes to relationships we build with our clients, because we're, this stems back to, to offer a little bit of context. Um, yep. When I was first starting out, um, this was actually actually back in 2018 when I first graduated from college, and I was just um, a fresh grad out of college. I, <laughs> yep. I didn't I didn't know what providing value means. I want to learn how, how to do that because I was like, well, I just graduated. I, I learned. I don't have to study. Yeah, like I, I, I don't think I, I don't have any valuable, uh, any anything valuable that I can contribute towards the market, right? So, uh, whichever market I decided to jump into yeah, yeah. for whatever reason. So, um, when I first started uh, learning more about uh, Facebook ads and just um, how to build a business, I actually invested into this course uh, from this couple that was teaching people how to start their uh, own Facebook ad agency. So as a 22 year old kid out of college, I just uh, jumped in with my buddy, dropped six grand, and just dove into that world. It was uh, the couple was teaching people how to start their own Facebook ad agency ah, for yes. local business owners, so yep. for small brick and mortar businesses. And right off the bat, I was like, well, gym owners, because if I can help gym owners, uh, I can help more people like me at the age of 18. Right? Because for me, my background, I, I was very insecure, had very low self-esteem, all the way leading up to 18 when I had a really harsh moment with myself where I was like, Dude, I just don't like you. you know? Wow. Um, and, and but but that was what put me towards the path of fitness, and that actually changed the trajectory of my of my life, really. Because up until that point, I was very much apathetic. I didn't care about a lot of things in life. Mm -hmm. right? So I was I was a really tough student. But uh, because of fitness, I took control of my academics, of my of my habits, of my discipline, of my work ethic, um, of the way that I show up, and controlling all the things within my control. So all that in mind. Um, I decided to help gym owners. So, well, yeah, so when I decided to start helping gym owners, very quickly I realized I was uh, I was really bad at sales at the time, but I just uh, <laughs> made a lot of cold calls. Uh, but at least out of those cold calls, I was able to get out of the this trend, this pattern, if you will, of a lot of gym owners expressing um, how they've worked with marketing companies. They just have gotten burnt, you know, like yeah. they just didn't get the results they were looking for. And That's a common um, thing, isn't it? Very common, unfortunately, right? So. So when I heard that, I was like, man, like that's, that's ridiculous, right? It's like, I, I, so from that moment, like ever since I discovered that, like I was like, I'm not going to be one of those people, right? So, so how I started off, it was a mix of uh, values because I, I, what I care about is just like helping another person. And if I'm just, if I'm taking their money and I'm not providing value, I'm not helping another person, right? It's like no. that, you're robbing them, that's blood money, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's on one hand, but then on the other hand, I was a little insecure as well because I was just starting out, right? It's like, so I was, when I was working with gym owners, I was like, hey, listen, like, don't pay me anything. Let me get you results. Then you can pay me. Right. So, so we were performance based from day one because I wanted to provide something that was actually helpful, right, to a group of people that I, I cared about serving. Um, so that being said, a lot of the relationships we build, I mean, last 
years, right? Yes. It's like, um, it, it, like it, so for example, the very first client that I had ever brought on, uh, we're still friends today. I mean, his name's Aaron. He, he's, um, he owns a gym over in Staten Island, right? It's like, mm-hmm. um, and we have been like on and off over the years, right? But, um, but over the past four years, we, we've kept our relationship. It's, um, and very recently, it's, uh, we were running ads for them until we put things on pause, right? So um, on the topic, it's relationships is what what's everything, right? It's like um, yep. businesses, ultimately, we, we think of it as uh, numbers and metrics. However, businesses mean nothing without the people that are part of it and mm-hmm. the people that are involved in it, right? So um, that's how I think of it, at least. Yeah, thank you very much for the feedback. Absolutely loving this call, George. Now tell me, in an ideal world, we'd like to meet face-to-face with all of the gym owners um, that we work with. However, given recent times, we've all had to, in a large part, go online. Now, with that, there come some benefits and some challenges, I would suspect. Now, is your delivery um, purely online? And if it is, you, you've got a global network, a global opportunity here. Yeah, yeah. So so it is online, right? So because of uh, the nature of uh, what we do, we, we offer marketing consulting help to, to really help a gym become uh, profitable real fast, right? Starting off with just getting more people in the door because oftentimes we just need to be heard. Yep. They, just, they just need more people walking through the door, right? Based on the numbers, right? Um, so we can do that anywhere, right? So we have a virtual team. We serve gym owners actually across the across the US and we, we have a couple of clients in, um, in Canada as well. So yeah, it's global. We can, nothing holds us back. No, that's fantastic. Now tell us a little bit, and we talked about pillars earlier. Where did the name Jim Pillars come from? There must be a foundational story behind that. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I mean, I, I remember as I as I was two years in at that point um, of, of just, so my first exposure to even remotely starting a business was 2018, right? It's like, um, but then I didn't go all in, all in on it until uh, 2020, until I actually quit my full-time job at LinkedIn. Um, because I actually really looked forward to that opportunity as well. But then mm-hmm. once I spent a few months in there, I was like, mm, this is not it. Not for me. Um, but, but for me, once I started to observe and learn more of the common mistakes that a lot of entrepreneurs made who was starting off, right? it's like um, this idea that we have to spend so much time um, putting a, a website together, right? It's like uh, figuring out the logo, the colors, the branding, right? It's like yeah. the name of it, right? It's like um, I, I became aware of uh, that trap that a lot of people fall into. So for me, like one of the ways I behave in was um, I wanted to form a bias towards action. I just wanted to pro- uh, just take action fast to build momentum. Uh, so I don't get stuck or I don't get paralyzed, right? It's like, um, because analysis paralysis is very common. So mm-hmm. What came to gym pillars? It's um, it's, it wasn't rocket science. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I, one of the things I re- recognized that uh, early on, when, once I started helping gym owners with marketing, I realized um, they need a lot more help beyond just marketing because most gym owners they didn't have a sales process in place. Right? It's like because f- when it comes to marketing, uh, lead generation, it's when it comes to the end result, a, a lead is only as good as how a lead is nurtured, as in how a lead is reached out to, how a relationships build, yep. and the sales process in terms of how you engage with that person, how you enroll them into whatever relationship that you want them to be a part of, right? It's like if you believe that they're a good fit. So um, early on, I realized that it's like a lot of gym owners, a lot of gyms, really, they don't have a formal sales process. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't track anything, right? So uh, I realized they're, they came down to these four pillars that all gyms need to nail down in their business. And not even just gyms, but any business, really. It's like marketing, right? So we need a way of getting getting in front of the people that we want to help right? with our service or our product. Um, sales, well, how do, in the context of a gym, it's like, how do you get people in the door? And yep. then how do you have a conversation with them? Mm-hmm. How do you enroll them? Right? Yep. And, and then after that, it's like, uh, we have a over-delivery, right? That's something I'm really big on it's, um, because it's very easy to over-promise and under-deliver. Mm. But how, how do you make a promise and over-deliver on that promise for you yeah. to actually build a relationship from there, right? Last but not least, you have retention. Right? It's like, what are the what are, what are the actions that you take? What are the things that you, you prioritize to make sure that this relationship is valued and then you're able to express that, right? So, so how do you retain people? So uh, those are the four pillars that I identify as, as important, as necessary, not just in gyms, but in every single yeah, niche, business. But, yep. Every single business, right? It's like, but, but for us, because we were serving gyms, I was like, well, gym pillars. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, because once again, going back to that bias towards action, right? I didn't want to think like, oh, what should I, what should so, I do? So, 
George, tell me, how do you meet your clients where they are right now? Because you're, you're walking cold or your, your colleagues are walking cold to a new gym or online, as it were, and you'll need to do somewhat of an audit, I suspect, to find out where they are in their business. Tell us a little bit about that part of the process. Mm, good question. So for us, we actually, I mean, earlier on, it was, well, earlier on, it was very different from how we're doing things now, right? So, so, so now we just run uh, paid advertisements. Right? So yep. we run fit, the same way we get our, our clients uh, that we call partners, right? So all of our gym owners, uh, we call them partners. partners because we, yep. Yeah, because it's, um, it's essentially a partnership, right? So, um, but, but for the same way we get them results is the same way we acquire clients. Uh, right, so, so we you're walking the walk. We preach, yeah. We're walking the walk, right? So, so we run Facebook and Instagram advertisements to get in front of gym owners because Facebook and Instagram and just phone phones, that's where yeah. a lot of us yeah. are spending our time, right? So absolutely. So we're running these advertisements, getting in front of gym owners. Uh, gym owners would oftentimes click on one of our ads and then put in their name, email, phone number. And we would call them. We would just call them and we would just talk to them, right? It's like our process is... Um, we know we can't help everyone and not every gym's business model is the best fit for us, right? But we're very specific in terms of who we support and the, the kind of partners that we enroll, we want them to get the best results possible, right? So um, our process is a two-step process. The first the first step is essentially a screening process, 15 minutes, uh, for us to get to know their gym a little bit in terms of uh, their situation, right? It's like, uh, what's your business model? Uh, do you run group fitness, small tra- uh, small group training, personal training, or do you run boot camp, or do you run twenty four seven gyms, right? Or are you um, like any of those uh, pricing and model based questions, as well mm. as uh, challenges around marketing specifically? That's when we dig deeper into it, right? Just engage where they're at, right? Have yep. you ever run ads before? Um, and also, what do you what do you see as a challenge at the moment? Like, what do you think is the bottleneck in your business? Right, it's like what's holding you back, um, and just digging really deep into that to identify if we can even help in the first place. So yeah. that's the first piece. So so that's a fifteen minute qualifying call, and which yep. is the same thing that we actually teach our gym owners as well. Mm-hmm. The second piece is um, essentially think of it as an enrollment call, what we call a game plan call, right? So um, once we have identified, my team has identified, okay, so this is a gym we can help. They're doing, let's say, um, 10 grand a month, and they have two trainers that are supporting them, and uh, maybe they have run ads in the past, has worked, and it hasn't worked recently. They just don't have anything going. They've stopped yep. spending money on ads, but they need help. They need to get people in the door. They can take on at least 20 plus people over the next 12 weeks. Uh, and yeah. they're open to changing things up, uh, developing the process and they're coachable. Then we move forward to a second round, right? So second round's um, a game plan calling, which with um, typically it's with our head of enrollment, Dan. Um, he sits down, he gets the information from the first conversation, and then he actually sits down with them over over the course of 45 minutes over a Zoom call and just mm-hmm. hashes out game plan, right? With the gym owner, um, just based on where they are, and he dot, takes an even deeper dive, right? It's like in terms of the numbers, in terms of the data, it's like um, going over the, the business data uh, to, to identify where are they in the business, where is it that they want to go, right? And what's kept them stuck? Stuck. And, and, and what way have they moved in that direction in the past? Uh, why did it work? Why did it not work? What worked well? What didn't work well? Uh, take really deep dive into the motivators as well, and also like, assess like maybe sometimes even we get really personal. Sometimes even different patterns as business owners in terms of how we're keeping our business stuck, right? Uh, to, to challenge them on different beliefs uh, before mm-hmm. we actually enroll them, right? So. So that's our process, <clears throat> and that takes place over a uh, phone over Zoom. Um, but yeah, so so that can be yeah. any. Wow, right? that's incredible! I love the fact that there is a comprehensive system here. Everybody knows exactly what they're getting up front, and I think this call is certainly going to help them understand mm-hmm. that process very clearly. Now, just for context, you this is a very significant organization. You know, you've been featured in the New York Times, ABC News, Fox, Entrepreneur.com. How did all those things come about? Tell us a little bit about that side of your experience. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So, um, so I actually along this journey, it's um, one of the things that I didn't expect myself to to enjoy the most about this uh, building this process of building this business is the people that you meet alongside. Yeah, uh, building this business, right? It's like, um, so for me, it's like when I first started off, um, I have invested at least three different times at this point into mentorships and coaching programs, right? So the very first time is what got me started. Second time was when I was still at my full time job, and it was really it was. Um, it was a little bit early, but I was able to re- reap the full benefit of it. But the third one, which is the one that I'm still a part of, that I enrolled in uh, about two years ago, mm-hmm. um, that's that's one that made all the difference, right? right? So 
through that, I, I actually made a ton of connections, right? So like when I first jumped into the program, I was um, I was just starting out um, as, as a business owner. I was very, very green still. As, uh, I had just jumped out of my full-time job and I just went all in on this business. Um, but next thing you know, I started gaining a lot of traction, building a lot of momentum, right? And I started sharing more about my progress in this group and I just built a lot more relationships, right? So like, um, including that with my business coach as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the relationships that I had built is uh, with one of my friends who actually has started the, their PR agency. Right? So um, their PR, uh, so his name's Gavin. He, um, he's someone I actually partnered up with um, at, at some point last year, uh, I remember. But leading up until then, it's like a, a lot of relationships that I had built, especially within the PR industry, that's actually what got us to be featured oh, yeah. on those. Right? Like, I think oftentimes oh, we, we as business owners, is, um, we think that, well, if we if we just sit around, um, the, you know, people definitely. will come to us. Right? People will come to us and be like, "Hey, what are you no. doing? Let me just tell you the whole about it." Right? It's like, um, but f- for me, what I found is that it's like uh, naturally, it's, it's almost always got to be the other way around, right? So you're gonna create your own luck, if you will. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the ways that luck can be created is just by, well, the I believe in is just by being a genuine person and just yep. building a relationship with another person, right? So. So, yeah. yeah, that's impressive. Thank you so very much for sharing. You know, there's lots of takeaways for the, the new startup entrepreneur to think about, to consider as they go about this. We've talked about mindset, you know, physical health, mental health. We've talked about processes. We've talked about systems, value adding, helping others being the primary driver and not the money. Just so many nuggets of gold, George. Thank you so very much. Now, um, when we go through this Jim uh, Pillars process as a, as a partner, um, how long does it take for them? to actually start seeing results is it months or can they get started in the today and see some results today how does it work yeah that's a good question it's um it's faster than you think right it's like um when we take on a gym owner especially if we identify that they're a good fit within they, they usually go from a, a position which they don't have consistent leads or consistent people walking through the door to yep. A week later of them getting started, we can have the ads up and running, and their phone just be buzzing with new people that are yeah, coming. Yeah, amazing. In. Yep. Right. So, so it's just um, so within a week, and um, naturally the other results in terms of uh, whether they sign people up, so on and so forth. Um, that's we we ideally want within the first week to first fourteen days for them to be able to close uh, their first high ticket number. Right. Yep. That's essentially yep. a part of it, which is what we teach. Um, I and mean, we've had people that within their first. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating. Within uh, three weeks, they, they triple their business revenue, going from uh, 5,500 to, to um, I think 18 grand within wow. within three weeks. Uh, we have we've had other people um, bring in 15k within the first month, um, so on and so forth. It's um, it's incredible. It's, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it must be very rewarding for you to to go those, through this. Those are my favorite part by far. Like just yesterday, I had a client that reached out to me. They, um, he just sent me a screenshot of uh, what his uh, revenue looked like for the past uh, six months we've worked together. <clears throat> his business tripled. Yep, yep. His top line has tripled, right? It's like, um, and he's always been such a go player, right? It's like he's just been executing everything. It's, um, but, but at the same time, it's, um, but I would be fully honest, like not everyone gets that kind of results because no. it, it, it's based on the, the work people are willing to put in, right? It's like, um, and if, when it comes to sales, similar to how not everyone succeeds in the sales role, I think, Oftentimes, when people start businesses, it's, um, they don't realize that, especially service-based businesses, well, mm. especially gym owners, uh, yep. they don't realize that sales is so important, right? So, yeah, that's a big piece. That's incredible feedback. Thank you so very much. Now, um, with all that being said, there's obviously going to be a lot of people on today's call considering what we've talked about, George. Now, <laughs> if they want to connect with you, they are a gym owner. What's the, the very first step and where can they find you? I would say um, if you want to shoot me a message, if you're actually listening to this and, um, and and you feel like we could be a good fit or you're curious about what we do, like feel free to shoot me a message on my Instagram, uh, mm-hmm. it's George L 1022 um, or just book a call um, and we can see if we can help and we'll be super upfront with it um, at www.jimpillars.com. Um, 
either way helps. Yeah. It's uh, pretty easy to remember gympillars.com. Now, if you're on this call, you are interested, you're a gym owner and you're looking for that help and you're looking for a system to help get more leads in your door, this is certainly the show for you. Below this video, you will find a link back to uh, Jim Pillars, George and his wonderful team. And with all that being said, George, I've had an incredible time having you on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you so much for joining me. Likewise, Ben. Yeah, really appreciate you having me. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends, and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.